Good day everyone, I am Rosil Ipiala, BSN3 Social Studies. For today's video, I am going to discuss about the philosophical thoughts on education, utilitarian education by Herbert Spencer. But before that, let us first identify what are the three objective, objectives. At the end of this topic, we are going to define what is utilitarian education. Second, determine his philosophical thoughts on education. Third, reflect on his philosophical thoughts on education and how it influences on educational practice today. Who is Herbert Spencer? Herbert Spencer is known as one of the leading social Darwinists of the 19th century. He is a philosopher, biologist, and sociologist. He was born on April 27, 1820, and died on December 8, 1903. His father taught him physics, geometry, and science. That is why at the age of 17, he has already had the knowledge of an average school children. In 1992, he was nominated as a Nobel Prize in Literature. So what is utilitarian education? Utilitarian <laughs> education is an industrialized society that requires vocational and professional education based on scientific and practical objectives rather than on the very general educational goals associated with humanistic and classical education. Herbert Spencer was the first person who coined the first, the phrase, I mean, survival to the fittest. So what does it mean? It means that human development had gone through an evolutionary series of stages from the simple one to complex and from the uniform to the more specialized kind of activity. Social development had taken place according to an evolutionary process by which simple homogeneous society systems is characterized with humanistic and classical education. He believed that people in an industrialized society needed a utilitarian education in order to learn useful scientific skills and subjects, which means that Learning should be a sensory experience wherein a student interact with his or her environment from slow, gradual, and inductive process. Children should be encouraged to explore and discover which should allow them to acquire knowledge naturally. A student should only engage in those activities that would allow him or her to survive in the society. Education and schooling. According to Spencer, he never loved old traditions. He wanted to lead the child to a very high idea by developing his interests. He identified the five types of activities in the curriculum. These are self-preservation, indirect self-preservation, rearing of offspring, citizenship, and leisure of life. The first one is self-preservation. Spencer believes that a knowledge of this subject will help one to preserve his health by furthering the, the various spontaneous activities. The second one is indirect self-preservation. This pertains to activities are those which help one to make a successful living. That is why he recommend the teaching of science because he believed that it will preserve us from make, making our life. One is rearing of offspring. Spencer wants to give the knowledge of rearing of offspring to children in the school because it is difficult for them to rear their children properly. Therefore, parents should be prepared for bringing up their children. The fourth one is citizenship. Spencer desires that a child should be a worthy citizen. He thinks that history cannot be used properly without the knowledge of science. The last one is leisure of life. Spencer has a very liberal outlook of life. For this, he wants to teach children painting, 
music, and etc. The standardized testing used in the No Child Left Behind Act is a way of introducing competition into schools as it identifies achieving and non-achieving schools and teachers. Spencer would raise entry standards for students in order to preserve teacher education program to make them more competitive. Education today continues to be influenced by Spencer's social Darwinist theorist. In fact, his curriculum activities is based on human need are still being implemented in one form or another.